What's going on guys, Brandon here. Uh, we have our Q&A, our macro Q&As here on Tuesday. And I know this is backwards right now, but still, uh, it's the thought that counts. And this is a uh, article from Market Watch, and it's your house should not be your retirement plan. And this article goes on to say, it's, it's really interesting. This is something we've been talking about for, for years. And um, you know, if you pay attention to any of the videos we've done over the years, you pay attention to Robert Kiyosaki, anything like that, we talk a lot about assets and liabilities. An asset is something that puts money in your pocket every month, and a liability is something that takes money every month from you. So it takes money from your pocket every month. So knowing that difference is huge. And so many of us were grow. I grew up the same way. So many of us grew up thinking that our house was an asset, our own primary residence, and and it's not. It's it's something that you know is there to live in, give you shelter, provide for your family, etc. But it's not an it, it's not an asset. It's not something that gives you money every single month, right? So in here, you talk about most people, most Americans, their house is their retirement plan. That's insanity. Most people, and I forget the numbers now, I'm sure many of you have heard them, that you know, 70, 80, 90% of Americans don't have more than $1,000 in their bank account for an emergency. Or you know, most Americans don't have more than $100,000 or $100,000, $200,000 in their 401k at the end of their life. This, for instance, right here, it goes on to say that a uh, house, a median price home is $240,000. And, you know, if, even if you pay that off, even if it's paid off, that's going to give you how much to live on. If you're maybe getting some Social Security every month, if that's still there, and if you are planning to just have a little bit of Social Security, if it's there, and then your house, which is paid off, and that's, you're going to sell that, and then you still have to go live somewhere, right? Even if you sold it off and got all of that money, right? Again, this is backwards, but you can get the gist of this. $240,000 home on average or the median priced home, um, if you will, at $36,000 a year, which is $3,000 a month, say that's what you want to live on. Even if, if you want to live on more, I mean, I'm, I'm being somewhat generous here, I think, saying you only need $3,000 a month. Hopefully you want to live off of more. That gives you six, not even seven years to live off of your money. So if you plan on retiring at like 95 years old, then maybe that's great. You know, that'll be, that's awesome. Now you can you, you can live the next seven years of your life till you're 102 and you're good to go. So, you know, you just work till you're 95 and you're good. So, um, I just, I wanted to bring this up just briefly because I get this question a lot. I get this question really all the time actually. And people are constantly, whenever the market goes up, people are talking about going to invest in real estate and they, you know, Brandon, I want to go invest in properties. And I always, I'm going to tell people straight up, like, this is not a great time to go invest in rental properties. I mean, you can find great deals still in any market. However, it's a hell of a lot harder to find deals in a market when it's a, it's this low in inventory. It's a seller's market, right? So, you know, you have to be willing to run into the burning building when the when the, bur the building's on fire. That's a fire sale, right? We all know what a fire sale is. Well, the stock market does the same thing. When the markets are crashing and the real estate market's crashing, that's when you go in and buy stuff. So, for some reason, like I said, the herd wants to go do things when it's the wrong time always. They're always late to the party. So, you know, the, the big money, they made the, their money in 08, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. They're gone. That big money is gone. They're off doing the next thing, right? So, you know, they're, they're the ones buying into gold and silver right now, stuff like that. You got China and Russia buying into gold and silver, and all the biggest players are hedging themselves. They're getting into the crypto game. Chase is bank is, and they're you know China and Russia, like I said, are buying gold and silver. All the big players are gone. They're on to the next thing. They made their money in real estate. You know that we had a lot of Chinese investors come in our last, you know, after the next five, six, seven, eight years after the crash, come in and buy a ton of real estate because it was cheap. It's that's when you make money, is when things are cheap. So. I just wanted to share this because, like I said, I get this question a lot. You know, what should we do with our money? How, you know, and it comes into the house game a lot because we talk to a lot of sellers all the time, right? We just listed two homes this week in Clarkston, that uh, right in our backyard. That are, um, you know, fortunately those people are in in a great financial uh, situation, but not everyone is. You know, so what can you do to improve your financial situation? Well, it's started getting educated on the process. Uh, start finding better advisors and better mentors around you and start learning the game instead of being just a victim to the game. So um, let me know what questions you have about this and just give you the definition of simple things is like the definition of an asset and a liability. You know, it's everyone was told that your house is an asset. Well, 
it's someone's asset. It's the bank's asset because you're paying them every month for it. And, and then you're paying the government property taxes to, you know, in, to infinity, right? So you're always paying someone else for the primary residence. If you own apartment complexes, you know, you're getting income every month, you're getting positive cash flow, then that's an asset for you. Your, ho- your primary home, no, is not. So just knowing the definition is, is really the moral of the story. And, and once you have the vocabulary correct, then you can have a solid foundation that can be built upon. So um, I just, like I said, I, I get this question a lot, you know, hey, Brandon, what should we do? But remember, you know, most people, they only have their home to uh, bank on. And we, again, the entitlements, they're really not going to be there. Let's be honest. They're not going to be there in 10 years, 20 years. And it's like every single, you know, and they could be to some degree. They're just, you're going to get minimal from it. And they're going to they're gonna tax that crap out of every other person possible to even get a little bit of that for those who have paid in the, in the, in the past. So anyone under 40 years old, 45 years old, you, you should not even be thinking about any of that. You should be thinking about how can I hedge myself? How can I build my wealth now and take control of it instead of just putting it on a 401k that it has fees up the yin yang. You can't even take it out. It's, it's taxed, double tax. You have to be able to start thinking differently. And this is, the, these are the things that my team, Legacy Group, our real estate team, we do this all the time. This is all we do. This is my passion. This real estate team was created because of the issues that were going on 10 years ago. That was the the, the time I remember watching the markets go down and just thinking, I need to learn this money game inside and out. And it started literally 10 years ago, um, over 10 years ago, actually. It was almost 11 years ago that I started just devouring every you know financial book and currency history and monetary history and uh, real estate and this that, and the other thing and getting into this real estate game actually getting into it and practicing it physically that's that's the way we learn right so actually getting into it and doing it um and a lot of things became very clear and as you can see we've got a whole heck of a lot of books that um i've read and uh, i've just had the fortune to kind of go through and pour through and start really understanding what the game is about so um the median price home, to get a recap, is $240,000 a year. If you're planning on that to be your retirement, you have, and you only, or you're looking at $3,000 a month to live off of, you only have seven years. I'll, not even seven years, but I'll give you seven years to live off of that income for the rest of your life. Like I said, hopefully you're 90 years old, 95 years old, and you can live to your 100, 102, and then you're good to go. Otherwise, if you're planning on retiring when you're, you know, 60, 65, 70, or whatever it is, you better. You better start thinking of a different plan. We all better start thinking of a different plan. So I appreciate you guys for tuning in. I appreciate the questions that you guys give all the time. They're, they're always, they get more entertaining and fascinating every single time. And um, I, like I said, I really appreciate it. And let me know what questions you have and what you're doing for retirement, what you're doing to set yourself up and to head yourself for the things that are coming. Again, we've talked about these things for a couple of years now. We're long overdue for corrections in the market and, you know, just been breaking records left and right. And as we all know, what, you know, good things come to an end, all good things come to an end. What goes up must come down. So, you know, be smart. We need to be smart about these things. And, uh, and we all do. And I, I, this has been an 11 year journey and it's never going to end. It never ends. The next market goes down and the stock market goes down, real estate goes down. You jump into that, start buying. Right. And then you jump out of the other hedges and into that. So it just constantly goes back and forth. It's like a tennis game basically, right? So anyway, I appreciate you guys more than anything. Your time, your energy watching these videos. It's uh, the most important thing we have, the most important asset we have. So I really appreciate your time and energy more than anything. And uh, like I said, let me know what you are doing to set yourself up. I'd be really curious to find out what it is you're doing. Maybe we can talk about stuff and uh, maybe learn something from each other. So appreciate you guys. We'll talk to you soon.